67. Explain why ice, which has which is a crystalline solid, has a melting temperature of 0 degrees Celsius, whereas butter, which is an amorphous solid, softens over a range of temperatures. Okay. So we have two comparable substances here. We have ice, right? Ice versus butter. Now they did tell us that ice was a crystalline solid. So we'll write that down. Crystal lint solid. And butter, they told us, was an amorphous solid. So right from here, let's just say what each one of these solids are. Now, if your substance can form a crystalline solid, that means that the substances in question, in this term it's ice, are coming together in a very geometric pattern in which the molecules will be touching each other, even though I'm kind of not drawing it that way. But in theory, they should be all touching each other, and they should be stacked like perfectly. As we can see here, I'm stacking them in a very perfect kind of manner, as, as perfect as I can. Um, but you'll, you'll see that they kind of will um, be very geometrically structured. So we'll say very structured. As opposed to an amorphous solid, when this type of solid uh, forms, the molecule, you know, the, the substance in question, which is butter, is not very geometrically shaped. Uh, kind of they're like all over the place. Some will be close together, some will be a little bit farther away. Uh, it tried to form a crystalline solid, but, you know, it, it didn't happen before it solidified. So this is not structured. Okay. Now, they also gave us a little bit more information here, is that they gave us ice, was a crystalline solid, it had a melting temperature of just one temp, right? It, it will melt at zero degrees Celsius, one temperature. As opposed to an amorphous solid, there is no melting point, specific melting temperature of an amorphous solid. This will melt at varying temperatures, varying temps to melt. Whether it's, you know, 10 degrees um, of, a, of a process in which butter will melt, right? Kind of, kind of, you can kind of see this uh, when you're, you know, when you're cooking and you're using butter. Sometimes I use uh, butter uh, for when I make scrambled eggs in the morning. Um, when you put the butter onto the pan, some of it will start melting, right? But not the whole stick of butter is going to melt in at one single temperature. It takes a varying amount of temperature to get the butter fully melted, right? If we're melting it and kind of opposite direction as well. It takes various temperatures to form that butter back up. Okay. So now we just have to explain why ice is crystalline, why butter is amorphous. Why one temperature for ice and not one temperature for butter? Well, the key here is what is ice? Well, ice is a fancy way for just saying H2O in the solid form. And if we drew the Lewis structure for what water looks like, it's got this going on here, right? It's got the oxygen in the middle surrounded by the two hydrogens. And if we did talk about the intermolecular forces between the molecules of the ice, so multiple H2Os, uh, intermolecular, intermolecular forces. Remember that all molecules have van der Waals forces, or sometimes they call them London forces or dispersion forces. Um, let's call them dispersion. H2O is a polar molecule, so it's got dipole-dipole attractions as well. And since on H2O, I do see that I have an OH bond or an HO bond, whichever one you want to think of it as, it also has hydrogen bonding.
Now, specifically, remember the hydrogen bonding, if a molecule has a hydrogen bonding, it, it has a, a really great force, meaning that this is going to increase your forces. And the more forces that you have and the stronger the attractiveness, the more closer those molecules are going to stick together and form a crystalline type of solid. So it's mainly because of the hydrogen bonding that clicks the H2Os together. Click, 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 so that it's all nice in a geometric uh, way. Because remember, the partial um, negative on the oxygen, remember oxygen is the more electronegative element than hydrogen. So the negative oxygen will want to hook up with, if I just move this out here, and if I if I just um, make this, we'll do it like this. We'll stack them. So if I have another um, water molecule, the negative oxygen on one of them will want to hydrogen bond with the hydrogen on the other. That's the attractiveness. The partial positive hydrogen wants to hook up with the uh, negative for the oxygen. And now it's becoming like a very structured type of uh, substance. As opposed to butter, right? Just know that butter is um, a type of lipid. And lipids, maybe you've, uh, maybe you have learned them in biology class, which hopefully uh, in the future we will put out biology uh, for you guys as well. Would love to get to that. But just know with those lipids and butter, your intermolecular forces are not as great. These molecules are very, very, very long. So they are mostly carbon and hydrogen based. You will see these kind of tails. You might have heard them that they're like fatty acid tails. And the tails here are very, very, very nonpolar. So these are roughly nonpolar molecules. So generally nonpolar. So with that being said, they only have dispersion forces. They might have a little bit of dipole-dipole, but majority of them will not. The majority force for butter is dispersion forces. And that's why there is not as high of an attractiveness because you don't have, specifically, you don't have hydrogen bonding. So the attractiveness is a little bit less as if we were ranking it with the water. So that's why when it's solidifying over, you know, a period of time, they're not as attractive to each other. So they're kind of like, eh, whatever. We'll just solidify when we solidify. But the more, you know, intermolecular forces, the more attractiveness those molecules are going to like click into place and form these very, very nice little geometric solids. So the whole explanation to everything that's on this page is basically why ice has a melting temperature of one, um, one value where butter, uh, softens over a range of temperatures. It's all because of the intermolecular forces, more forces. So more IMFs, intermolecular forces, more attractiveness. And because of the more attractiveness, you know, they kind of click into place. And that's what's going on here. And I hope this makes sense. What'd you think? Thank you so much for viewing the video. I hope you're having a great day out there. And if you wouldn't mind, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you for so many people out there that have, you know, supported the channel or just viewed the, viewed the channel, watched the channel. Um, we're so glad that we can help you guys out. And thank you for being part of the community. I love reading your guys' comments in the comment section. And I try to get back to as many people as I can. Um, but yeah, thanks so much. And I hope you're having a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.